guys! So this year I decided I wanted to do one of those My Year in Reading videos or Reading Stats videos I see a lot of other booktubers do and I love watching and I also love looking back at my year in reading and sort of thinking about what I have been reading, what I haven't been reading and I thought it'd be fun to share that with you. So essentially I'm going to tell you about things like how many books I read, what genres I read the most of, um, details about the authors I was reading books by, themes, whether they were translated or not, these kind of things and we'll go through them as the book goes on. Um, so hopefully this is something that you enjoy as much as I do. But I feel like the most important stat, the one that you kick things off with, is how many books I read in 2018. I read more books in 2018 than I have since I was a child. I read 112 books, which is completely mind-blowing to me. I have not read that many books since I was literally a child reading children's books. I remember once when I was in primary school, maybe I was like 10, 11, 12 or something, I made a goal of reading 100 books that year, I think, because I said to everyone, I bet I read that many books. And I was like, right, I'm going to write them all down. Um, and I did, and I managed to pass 100, but I don't think I've read that many books in a year since then. Um, so this year has been completely um, at odds with my regular reading, which is usually between sort of 60 and 80 a year. And I feel like the initial question from everyone's going to be, how did you read so many books? That's so many books. You're such a busy person. La di da di da. To be perfectly honest, and this is, I feel, quite important to make note of, sometimes in circumstances like these, when somebody does something like reads a lot of books, which is maybe something you want to do yourself, it's not always for a good reason. And to be honest, I haven't read 112 books because my life has been perfect this year. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware, in 2017 my dad passed away from cancer at the age of 59 and that has had a massive impact on me, my life, my mental health and I have been grieving quite severely all year um, with like real ups and downs in my mental health and my ability to kind of like get through everyday tasks. Um, sometimes I've been okay, sometimes I've not been okay. And one of the things that I have massively used as a coping mechanism, as a pure form, as a form of pure escapism is reading and that is why I have read so much more this year because I have found it a lot more difficult to sit with my own thoughts, I have found it more difficult to sleep this year and because of those things I have spent more time reading and I am incredibly grateful that books have provided me that solace particularly as you'll see fantasy books has been a genre I have had a real spike in reading this year because I think they serve particularly well for me as escapism as they're completely other worlds I don't have to think about my own world with. And that's not to say I've not had good things happen in 2018 and I've not had joyful moments but I haven't necessarily been able to um, kind of function at my optimum all the time and because of that I have read more. So I can't give you advice on how to read more to be perfectly honest. I'm really glad that I have books and that they provide me that solace but I probably wouldn't have read as much this year if I hadn't suffered that terrible loss. So. That's the cheerful opener to this video. I don't want to dwell on that too much and I don't want that to put a dampener on what I read because I still read some amazing, amazing books and I do want to tell you about what kind of books I read. So without further ado, I am going to get into the rest of my reading stats. For some of these stats, I have used a spreadsheet that was created by Sophie over at Portal on the Pages, which I used to keep a track of some of the information about the books I was reading throughout the year, and it's been very interesting and very useful. So I will link her channel down below as well as um, her video with the spreadsheet that you can download. It's very fun, very useful. Um, and one of the things that that spreadsheet tracks is genres. So I can tell you quite easily because of that spreadsheet that the genre I have read the most of this year is fantasy. So 32% of the books I've read this year have been fantasy which is more than any other genre. There's really no other genre that comes close to that. Um, the like next three genres that are all a similar amount that I all read about 12% of my reading was are uh, poetry, non-fiction and literary fiction. So I read, you know, very similar amounts of each of those books. I think I read one less of one of those genres. And then the next two genres which don't quite make up for 10% each 
of my reading, they're around 9% each, are classics and science fiction. And after that, I have read various other genres, but they account for very little of my reading. So a little bit of historical fiction, a little bit of graphic novels, a little bit of contemporary fiction, um, a couple of thrillers, and that is pretty much... Oh, and some short story collections, all of which I only read, you know, like between like one and four books of. So, as you can tell, a lot, a lot of fantasy. And like I said, both for me, fantasy has been a big escapism this year, but I also have sort of rediscovered a love of fantasy. Fantasy was always my favourite genre, and it's always the genre that I said was my favourite, but I think I've read less of in the past few years. But I discovered a few favourite fantasy authors this year and really got wrapped up in that genre. Which I think leads me to my next stat, which is my most read authors. So I thought it'd be interesting to make a note of authors I read multiple books by, or three or more books by. There were a few authors I read two books by, but I haven't included them. Um, which means that my four authors I read the most of this year were Juliette Morelli, who I read six books by in the fantasy category. Uh, Nadia Korofor, who I read four books by, which counts for fantasy and science fiction. Um, Martha Wells, who was science fiction, I read three books by, and Emma Hamm, I read three books by, which was fantasy. Um, so those are the authors I read the most of this year. Recommend them all. I only read so many books by them because they're all brilliant authors. And they're all authors that I read for the first time in 2018, which is a lot of fun. I discovered some new favourite authors and read quite a lot of their books, which was really, really wonderful. According to this spreadsheet, my average rating for the year was 3.9, which I think is pretty good. It means I read a lot of good books and that does seem to match up with um, what I have written down here. So I only rated four books two stars. I didn't rate any book one stars, which is awesome. It means I'm picking up books that I am enjoying and I'm, I'm aware of my own tastes and what writers I like and what genres I like. If you're really curious about what those were, they were Clean, Dragon's Bait, High Fidelity and I can't even remember the name of the last one, The Girl in the Locked Room. Um, none of which I like particularly enjoyed some of which had particularly irritating parts. So those are the books that gave four stars. I'm not going to go through all the other categories because after that we gave um, 26 books three stars, um, 60 books four stars, so for me that's my most popular rating that I'm giving things, and 22 books five stars, which is wonderful. Although some of those were rereads, so I read, so I reread four books in 2018, one of which was a four star and three of which were five stars. Uh, to be honest, I actually reread some other Harry Potter books. I didn't even... I just... I, I, I don't tend to include Harry Potter books on my Goodreads. I do occasionally and then other times I don't and that's because I quite honestly always have a Harry Potter audiobook on the go and sometimes I finish it, sometimes I don't finish it, sometimes I fall asleep when I'm listening to it and then don't rewind back the two hours I missed or something. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Some other information I can provide from you from Sophie's spreadsheet includes the fact that 50% of what I read was in paperback form, 28% of what I read was in audiobook form, 12% hardback and 10% ebook, which is interesting. 79% of what I read was adult, which doesn't really surprise me. I do tend to steer towards the adult age category. But then 16% of the books I read were young adult and 5% were children's, because I didn't read that many children's books. Goodreads has also informed me that I read 28,039 pages, which is more than I have read. Um, in any of the other years I've used Goodreads. Interestingly enough, although I only read 82 books last year, I say only, but in 2017 I read 80 books in comparison to this year's 112, I still read 20,384 pages, so I'm assuming I read some longer books in 2017, or more longer books than I did in 2018, which doesn't really surprise me. And if you're interested, 10 of the books I read in 2018 were translated fiction. Now these are the stats that I find interesting in terms of thinking about what I'm going to read in 2019 because I would certainly like to read more translated fiction in 2019 um, and if I was going to set myself a cautious goal I would like to at least up that to 20% of what I'm reading. If I could up my translated fiction intake to 20% I would be satisfied for um, an, as, as an improvement on the year before so 10% of what I read was translated fiction. Now, I didn't calculate a percentage for this but I read 18 LGBTQ plus books. So what I mean by that is that at least one of the central characters would fall under the LGBTQ plus spectrum or queer spectrum um, and that that's explicitly acknowledged in some way in the book. Um, not that 
not like Dumbledore who somebody tells you is gay afterwards and it isn't really put in the book so not like that. <laughs> so I read 18 LGBTQ plus books and um, if it's non-fiction I considered it LGBTQ plus if the author self-identifies as that and includes that in their discussion in their non-fiction book. Similar with poetry and this is something I would also like to read more of. Something I really came to think of though in 2018 is how poorly queer literature is publicised. So often I find that books where um, the focus isn't necessarily coming out, say, but they do have a character, a main character that falls within the queer spectrum in them, it's not put in the blurb. Publishers tend not to advertise that fact, which really, really frustrates me. And uh, one of the things I've been looking for more in 2018 is queer fantasy, um, uh, with like particularly female-female romances in it, which is something I feel is lacking, and I've found some, and I've got some more to read in 2019, and I would like to read more of in the coming year. But I am disappointed in publishers. Um, I've learned that recently, that there is a lot of books that could be considered LGBTQ+, but that, that is not mentioned in the blurb perhaps because they don't think it will sell as many copies. In terms of where my authors originated from, I was quite pleased to see that I managed to cover most of the continent, although not in equal numbers. Um, the most books I read were from European authors, um, followed by North American authors, then much smaller percentages I have Asian authors, African authors, authors from countries like Australia and New Zealand, and one book by a South American author, which isn't anything to write home about but um, I'm glad that I covered most of the uh, continents apart from Antarctica which do let me know if you've read any books by authors who are from Antarctica because maybe that's something I should make the effort to read in 2019 so let, let me know if you can recommend me anything I mean Sophie is the person to go to really because she has been doing a round the world challenge where she reads a book from every single country and on that note in terms of Countries, the biggest number of my books from one country are from the USA, that's 38%, followed by 34% from the UK, and everything else is under 10%. But I did read books by authors from the Virgin Islands, Vietnam, Zambia, Australia, uh, Canada, China, France, Greece, <laughs> Ireland, Japan, Nigeria, North Korea, and Poland. So I covered a few countries, although obviously the UK and the USA have managed to dominate there and in terms of author race, 69% of the books I read were by white authors and 31% were by BAME authors, which is not adequate in my opinion. Um, I would like to again make more of a conscious effort in 2019 to up that. The only other things that I was truly curious about, so that I looked at, was that I've read seven books I borrowed from the library and I read 33 books that were given to me by publishers for review. So the rest of the books are all books that like I bought myself, were lent to me by friends or were gifted to me. If you're sitting there thinking, what are your favourite books of the year though, Jean? I've already filmed that video and it's already up. So that will be linked down below if you want to know my 15 favourite books of the year. Those, that is the random number that I came up with simply by just picking the books that really stood out to me. We came to 15 and I did a whole video telling you about all of those books so you can watch that. I will link it in the description box down below. But one of my takeaways from the year is that I've really discovered some new favourite authors that I plan on reading in 2019, including Juliet Murley, Neddy Okorafor, like I mentioned. And somebody also asked me what books were the biggest surprises to me. Well, you already know what books I was disappointed by and what books I loved the most. But I think the books that really exceeded all of my expectations are Convenience Store Women, which I adored and is in my favourites of the year, but also The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I ended up really enjoying more so than I would have expected myself to. Similarly, The Murder Bot Diaries by Martha Wells, which so far I think has four novellas in it, but I've only listened to the first three on audiobook, which are science fiction series following a um, android I loved those way more than I ever thought I would and equally Nevermore by Jessica Townsend really exceeded all my expectations. So although those last three didn't quite make it onto my favourites, if I'd done a top 20 they absolutely would have been there um, and they were like, they narrowly missed out. But they all really, you know, impressed me more than I was expecting them to. So those I think are my reading stats, I've been sitting here for quite a while so I'm sure I've covered plenty 
for you to get your teeth into. There's probably loads of numbers running around in your brain like they are in mine right now and this video is all over the place. But hopefully you enjoyed it. I'd love to know, um, I'd love to talk to you about any of the topics I've touched on in this video. I'd love to know about some of the things you've observed from the past year of reading. Um, what has it maybe made you think of you want to do more in 2019? Um, are you surprised by any of the stats I talked about in this video? But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!